I'm so grateful for throwaway accounts, because at least this can't be linked back to me. The story is first really embarrassing, but I truly believe that I got my justice. I know some of you might judge my actions, but what would you have done if you were in my shoes? Anyways, this is a long read, but trust me, it's worth it. Make sure to leave your opinions or comments, I want to see if I took it too far. So let me give you some context. I'm 35 female and have been married to my husband Mike for a few years. Things have not always been roses and sunshine, unfortunately. We've been dealing with fertility issues, and it's caused a rift between us. We've been trying for over three years with no results, and my husband constantly puts the blame on me. We've always wanted children, and I've hoped that we'll have a baby. My husband hasn't always been the kindest person, and my family doesn't like him at all. To the point that they don't even want him at family functions. So I've seen them for years and the only person I'm still in contact with is my younger sister Jasmine. Also, my friends don't like him either, especially my childhood best friend Fiona. But in his defense, he wasn't always like this. I don't know what made him change. Anyways, I was working a night shift at the hospital when I received a call from my husband. I work as a midwife, so I'm always in the maternity ward and delivery room. I used to receive so much joy from my job, but now I don't. It's hard to be happy for other mothers while you're battling fertility issues. I'd become envious of my patients because they were getting what I've been longing for. I answered my phone and my husband greeted me with so much excitement. I greeted back and he then asked me if I was busy, so I told him that I was not, but that he should make it quick. He told me that he was missing me and that he just wanted to hear my voice, which I found strange because it had been so long since we have, well, he's been this sweet. We continued talking and then he told me that he wanted to take me out for a date next weekend. I asked him what was the occasion because it wasn't even our anniversary. He laughed when I said that and asked me if it was wrong for a husband to want to take his wife out to a nice candle at dinner. I smiled when he said that and told him that it wasn't wrong and that I would love for us to go out to dinner. We spoke for a few minutes and then hung up. I had a smile on my face throughout my whole shift. I really had missed his sweet side and I was grateful that he was performing this romantic gesture. The week passed by very quickly. During such weeks, I would hardly saw my husband because I would be working back-to-back -back night shifts and he always left early for work. He had two jobs. He worked as a junior marketing assistant at the perfume store his father had left him. We were actually both co-owners of the perfume store, but I solely provide the funding because my husband's job pays him peanuts ever since they had to reduce his salary. It was finally Saturday, and I was getting ready for the dinner date. While I was getting ready, I received a text from Mike telling me that he would meet me at the restaurant because he was running late. I texted him back and continued getting ready. Once I was done, I headed off to the restaurant. The restaurant was super fancy and it had a romantic aura which I loved. The waiter took me to our table since Mike had not arrived yet as I was about to take my seat. I looked up and Mike walked in carrying a huge bouquet of red roses. My favorite flowers. He had a huge grin upon his face and I immediately rushed over to him with an excited look and just hugged him. He kissed my cheek and told me that he saw these beautiful roses and he immediately thought of me. I smiled and thanked him for those roses. We took our seat and proceeded to look through the menu. Mike ordered us some white wine and told the waiter that it was a very special night. My cheeks went red as I started to blush. We ordered our food and then started to catch up. He was telling me, well... Uh, about how well the perfume store was doing and that the reason he wanted to take me out was so that he could show me his appreciation. He told me that if it wasn't for me, then the perfume store would have closed a long time ago. So I just smiled at him, honestly, and told him that there was no need to thank me because I was only doing what a supportive partner should be doing. He looked into my eyes and told me that he wanted to apologize for all the times that he's hurt me. He said that these last three years of us trying for a baby have been hard on him, but he promised that he would do better. So I took a deep breath and decided to take a chance on a question that I've been dying to ask him again. I asked him if he would not mind us going to a fertility specialist. I continued to explain that the reason I want us to see one is just to find out what is exactly wrong and also so that we can weigh our options. He hesitated and I could see a bit of annoyance in his facial expression, 
but the words that came out of his mouth surprised me. He told me that he would not mind us going to see the specialist if it would make me happy. I smiled at him and told him that I appreciate him doing this. So we continued our lovely dinner and we were just reminiscing about old times, which was something we had not done in a long time. I noticed that he was ordering quite a lot of wine, but I brushed it off and told myself that maybe he's just really enjoying himself. He proceeds to tell me that for the festive season, he would love for us to go on a vacation, just the two of us. He added that he knows that it's been years since we've been on a vacation, and, well, he also told me that he wants to make memorable memories, especially before we have a baby. I was shocked because the last vacation we've gone on was literally our honeymoon vacation, which was moons ago. I was surprised that he wanted the vacation to just be the two of us, because ever since his father passed away, he's always wanted his mother to be involved. I asked him, would his mother have a problem with us going away, just the two of us? He told me that he's already discussed it with her, and that they've agreed that she would spend the Christmas season with her sister, who lives in Dallas, Texas. I smiled and told him that I loved the idea of us going away because we definitely needed it. Eventually, the dinner came to an end and we headed home. He continued to be romantic even when we got home, and I was happy, excited, and I could not believe that this was my husband. It's been years since he's been this romantic, and I thought to myself that things were finally looking up, and that the only thing that was missing was a baby. I was glad that he had finally agreed to go see the fertility specialist, Hopefully, after seeing the specialist, this would help our fertility journey. Hey guys, so two weeks has passed since that romantic date, and I was still reminiscing about it. Things at home have gotten much better, and we were acting like a love-struck teenager. I had not been this so in love for a long time, and I was just soaking in every minute of it. I was out with my best friend Jasmine, and we were having a spa date, since it's been a while since we saw each other. I was telling her about the romantic date my husband took me on, and throughout the whole conversation, she was frowning, so I asked her what's wrong. She told me that there's no way that my husband could just change so quickly. I looked at her with a sad facial expression, of course, and, well, asked, please don't ruin this for me. I told her that I have not been this happy in years, and the last thing I needed was negative Nancy and energy. She apologized for her negativity, but continued to tell me that she found my husband's behavior very, very strange. Well, I obviously ignored her, and we went to our facials and massages. Once we were done, we decided to go have a bottle of wine at one of our favorite restaurants nearby. I told her about how my husband finally agreed to see a fertility specialist with me. Her face softened and she smiled at me. She told me that she was extremely happy for me, that she hoped that we would receive positive news because she knows how much I've always wanted a baby. I got really emotional and told her that things were finally starting to look up for me and Mike's relationship and I could really use support instead of her negativity comments. She held my hand and told me that she would stop being so negative. She promised that she would try her absolute best to see Mike in a good light but it would take her time because she did not like how he used to treat me. I told her that I understood where she was coming from, and Mike wasn't the nicest person, and he had his horrible mean streak that just got worse when we started trying for a baby, but it seems like he's turned over a new leaf, and I'm happy about that. We continued with our conversation, and then it was time for us to head home. When I got home, I found Mike busy cooking dinner. Well, I was shocked because he hardly ever cooked, He'd always felt that cooking was the woman's position, which I didn't mind because I love to cook. I greeted him. He greeted back. He stopped cooking and gave me a big smooch, which caught me off guard. I smiled at him and asked what he was whipping up. He said it's a surprise and then proceeded to tell me that he's, well, bought my favorite bubble bath and candle that he wanted me to take a nice little relaxing warm bath while he prepared the meal. I kissed his cheek thank you and rushed upstairs to my warm bath. After an hour and a half, we were seated and enjoying the delicious meal he cooked. He asked me how was my day and I told him about it with Jasmine. He frowned and rolled his eyes when I mentioned her name because just like she doesn't like him, he also doesn't like her. However, he told me that I should ask Jasmine if she and her husband would be interested in joining on the vacation that we're planning. 
I asked if he was serious, and uh, he nodded his head in affirmation. He told me that it was about time that he and Jasmine squashed the beef and that he knew this would make me extremely happy. He added that my happiness is his main priority. So, I smiled and told him that I'd definitely ask her. He then proceeded to inform me that we have been invited to his family's reunion and further explained that it would be taking place at his mother's house and that it would be a barbecue. I told him that I could not wait because it's been a long time since we last saw his family. Luckily, I got along very well with his family. Me and my mother-in-law didn't always see eye to eye, but we got along most of the time. He then told me that this was the perfect time for us to let the family know that we're going to be seeing a specialist and that we needed their support. I nodded my head and told him that I would do my research to see if I could find a fertility center around our area. He told me that he could not wait for us to finally start a family, which made me blush. While I was cleaning up, Mike asked me if I had put money in the business account, and I said that I have not. He asked me if I could please send the money to the account ASAP because he wanted to buy a new stock. I told him that I would, and he then asked if I could add a bit extra, which he's never asked before, but I told him I would. I was glad that things were going so well between us, and it felt that nothing could destroy or ruin this happy little bubble that we were in. It was finally the day. Finally the day of the family reunion barbecue and me and Mike had just arrived at his mother's house. I had to admit one thing about Mike's family is that they knew how to throw a party. We started by greeting everyone and eventually we got to his mother. We greeted her and she greeted us back with a smile on her face and she told me that Mike had told her the good news about us going to see a specialist so that we could finally start a family. She added that she could not wait to have a grandchild to spoil and I just smiled at her and told her that I was glad that Mike had finally agreed for us to go see one. While I was talking to one of Mike's female cousins, Mike went to fetch me a plate of food. Suddenly, a pregnant blonde-haired lady walked in, and she looked so young, did not look familiar at all. She looked over at us and walked over to us with a shy smile on her face. She greeted us, and we greeted her back, and she asked me, Is this the Gordon's family reunion? I told her yes it was, and she then asked if Mike was there. Mike? I raised my eyebrow and asked why she was looking for Mike. She rolled her eyes and asked me who I was. <laughs> I lifted my hand, showed her my ring, and told her I'm Mike's wife. She gasped in extreme shock and told me that I was a liar. So I raised my eyebrow at her and told her that I was not lying and that Mike was my husband. Mike's cousin backed me up and told her that I was indeed the wife. So Mike finally came with a plate of food, and he immediately dropped the plate once he saw the young lady. He looked like he had just seen a ghost. The lady walked up to him and yelled that he owed her an explanation. Mike didn't even look at her, kept on asking her what the hell was she doing here. She yelled that he had never told her that he was married and everybody was just staring at us. So I walked over to them wanting to defuse the situation. I simply asked Mike who was this young lady and he responded by saying that he had never seen her a day in his life and that he had no idea who she was. The lady glared and proceeded to say he's a liar. He knew damn well who she was and I was so confused and asked Mike again, um, Mike, who is this lady? Mike said he didn't know. I could see that the lady was getting more and more angry and guys, she flipped. She yelled saying that she was Mike's girlfriend and they've been together for just over two years. Everybody was in shock, gasping for air and my body literally froze as the hair on the back of my neck stood up. She proceeded to yell that Mike has been promising to marry her for over a year now and she then explained that ever since she fell pregnant, Mike has been avoiding her. She further explained how she knew that he would be here and that he had invited her to this function because she's been nagging him about how they have been dating for over two years, but she has still never met his family. However, he never gave her the address of where the reunion would even be taking place. She then says that when he came to see her yesterday to give her money, she activated his location tracker on his phone. <laughs> and so it would be easy to find him. My heart shattered the moment she mentioned the baby. She was pregnant with Mike's baby? 
My mind starts to race. I mean, tears were rolling down my face, and I start to cry. Mike rushed over to me and tried to make an excuse. Well, I just snapped at him. I told him to shut up. I asked him if the reason he was being so nice to me was that he could cover up all this mess. He was being all nice and sweet so that when I found out about this, I would forgive him and be understanding. So everything he did, he was doing it out of guilt, not from his heart. He told me that what had happened between him and the young lady was a mistake. The lady got even more mad, proceeded to tell him he's a liar, and she continued to say that Mike had begged her to get pregnant. She looked at Mike and told him to stop lying and actually tell the truth. He yelled that she should leave because she had already done enough damage. I saw the hurt in her eyes when he uttered those words to her. I looked at her pregnant belly and I started to feel queasy. I rushed out of the reunion to the car since I had the keys and I got into the car and drove away. I just drove and drove and drove for hours while crying my eyes out. My phone was ringing off the hook, but I didn't even answer it once because I was so disgusted and betrayed. He had been having a whole entire affair and got his mistress pregnant. What made the whole situation hurt even more was that this clearly showed that the problem was me. I was the reason we can't have a baby. So I parked the car in a quiet area and I absolutely broke down. I was beyond broken. I mean, after a good 30 minutes, I stopped crying. He would not get away with this and I was going to get my revenge. I was not going to let him betray and hurt me like this with no consequences. He was going to pay for every single tear that he caused. So, a few weeks have passed since that awful day and I was staying with my sister for the time being. Mike had been calling my phone nonstop and I've been ignoring him. While I was at work, Mike's mistress appeared. I immediately froze and my colleague asked me what was wrong and I just shook my head and told her nothing. She came to us and asked if she could quickly talk to me and my colleague raised her eyebrow and I started to laugh. It was a fake laugh obviously but I proceeded to lie to my colleague by telling her that this was my cousin. My colleague smiled at Mike's mistress and congratulated her on the pregnancy and I frowned but walked out of my office with her. I asked what the hell she was doing. I told her that she was lucky that she was pregnant because if it wasn't for that, I would have beaten the crap out of her. She starts crying, said that made her feel bad. I asked to stop crying and after a few minutes she did. She told me that she didn't know that I worked here but Mike had recommended this hospital to her when she found out that she was pregnant. She had been coming here for appointments and wow, Mike was truly a piece of rubbish recommending the hospital where I work to his mistress. She told me that once she found out that Mike was married, she started searching for me on social media. She told me that she felt so dumb that she wished that she had never met Mike. I asked her how did she even find me on social. She told me that she had searched Mike's phone while he was sleeping the other day and I laughed. So, he was still seeing her. She told me that she wanted to punish Mike and make him, well, forgive for what he did. I smiled at her and told her that we could work together. After talking to Amy, Mike's mistress, I decided that I would leave my sister's place and head back home. My sister told me I was being foolish and naive and I simply told her that she needed to trust me because I have a few tricks up my sleeve. The moment I stepped into the house, Mike rushed over to me and starts to apologize. I asked him to please give me space and he said he would. I told him that I would be sleeping in the guest room and he told me that he completely respected that and I sorted myself out and waited for Mike to go to bed. Amy had told me that Mike had a big presentation tomorrow and that everything was on his laptop. In the early hours of the morning, I went into the study and found Mike's laptop open. It was obviously locked, but Amy had given me the password. I could not believe that Mike had given her his laptop password, but he never gave it to me. He'd always told me that his laptop was his privacy and that I should respect it, which I did. I opened the presentation and I deleted it and I smirked because I knew that this would get him in so much trouble. The next day arrived and I was at a divorce attorney with Amy. I'd explained to her that according to our state's laws, if I could show the court proof that my husband cheated, then I would receive a reimbursement from the court, which meant that I would get the majority of our assets. I told Amy if she helped me prove that Mike had been cheating me to the point that it even produced a baby, then I would give her half the money. She immediately agreed. 
The attorney told me that Amy, well, exactly what I explained to Amy, and I could tell that Amy was relieved and had not been lying to her. She gave my uh, attorney all the evidence that proved that Mike and she had been having an affair. So, my attorney just smiled at me and told me that with all this evidence, we have a solid case. Mike had absolutely no idea what was coming for him. After the meeting with the attorney, I went home and found Mike. I asked him what he was doing at home so early, and he said, well, that he shouldn't be here. He should be at work, and I noticed that his eyes were blood red, and he had a bottle of hardcore vodka in his hand. He told me that he has gotten fired. I acted shocked and concerned, and I sat next to him on the couch, and I held his hand. I asked him what happened, and he told me that he had a big presentation today, and one that was meant to get him promoted. He told me that when he got to the boardroom to prepare his presentation, he could not find it anywhere. I asked him how could that be possible, and, you know, if he had thoroughly checked his laptop. He told me that he used to do IT in college, and that he had searched his laptop, and the presentation was seriously nowhere to be found. I hugged him and told him that we would get through this, and that everything would be okay. He starts apologizing again, and told me that he would never cheat on me ever. Again, ever. He told me that he only loves me, and that Amy was a distraction, and I nodded my head and told him that we would take things one step at a time. Three months have passed since Mike got fired from his job. He has not found a job yet, and I could see that it was taking a toll upon him. He told me that he was grateful that at least he had the perfume store, and I was busy cooking in the kitchen while Mike was watching TV when his mother barged into the house fuming with anger. Yep, my mother-in-law had her own key to our house, and that was Mike's idea. <laughs> My mother-in-law starts screaming at him, and Mike asked her to calm down, and she then asked him how he expected her to calm down when their perfume store was being sold. Mike told her that's impossible. She threw a paper at him, and I walked over to him and looked over his shoulder. The paper was a list of properties that were being sold, and the perfume store was, well, one of them. My mother-in-law asked him how could he lose his father's legacy, and reminded him that the perfume store had been in his father's family for years. Mike looked at me and asked me what the hell's going on. I shrugged my shoulders and he starts getting all up in my face. My mother-in-law pulled him back and told him to calm down and he asked me again what happened to the store because last he checked I was supposed to be funding it. I started to laugh. I asked him did he really expect me to keep using my hard-earned money to fund his stupid little perfume store when he had embarrassed me in front of his whole family by having a damn affair and to put icing on the top he had even gotten his little mistress pregnant. I told him that I'd stop paying the bill of the store since I was the owner. I decided it's time to sell it. Well guess what guys they both looked at me in absolute shock. I told him that I would definitely enjoy the profits from selling the store. Mike started insulting me and calling me all sorts of names and I laughed. Just in time, Amy walked into the house confused. Mike asked her what was she doing here and she rolled her eyes at him. She told him that he had texted her to come here and he told her that he had never done such. Amy told him that she was too pregnant to be dealing with this drama. I announced that I've been the one who texted Amy using Mike's phone. Amy asked me why and then she proceeded to ask me what I was doing there and she thought that I'd moved out since I had divorced Mike. Mike glared at her and told her that they were not getting divorced and that I have been living here for the past three months. Amy immediately uh, rose with her temper. She starts calling me a liar and accused me of using her. I smirked and asked her how did I use her. She told Mike that I'd asked for, you know, his laptop password so I could delete his presentation. I could see the anger in Mike's face, and I told him that was Amy telling the truth. He lunged at me, but I dodged it. My mother-in-law slapped him and told him to not do anything stupid because he's already lost so much. I told him that all of this was payback for everything that he's done to me. I continued to tell him that I wanted a divorce and that I'd already, you know, filed. I then proceeded to announce that I was pregnant and that I wanted nothing to do with Mike. Everyone looked at me with a shocked look upon their face. Well, I guess so. Hey guys, I'm coming back with a really late update. It's been a whole year since that horrible ordeal and Mike and I's divorce has finally been finalized. I've only seen him in court and I kicked him out of our home since it was in my name. 
He lives with his mother and he's still jobless, but I don't feel sorry for him at all. Since Mike had cheated, the court was in my favor and I received the majority of our assets and I did not share a single cent with Amy like I promised. She was angry when she found out that I received and had not given her anything. I confessed and admitted to her that I had used her and that I was never going to share anything with her. I mean, why would I share anything with my ex-husband's mistress? I told her that she was dumb for believing me and we haven't spoken since. Was I wrong for using her? The only form of payment I gave her is strictly coupons for her baby boy. I told myself that I would not punish an innocent soul, so I arranged the court that every month I would give her coupons for specific baby stores so that she would be able to get the baby whatever he needs. I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl after years of trying. Mike has not been present in her life, and guys, I'm okay with that. She doesn't deserve to have such a horrible man as a father. I allow Mike's family to see and visit her, especially his mother, and I just never expected my life to turn out like this, but I'm glad that it did. I finally got rid of the toxicity. I don't regret my revenge plan as much as it did a lot of damage. I'm glad that I proceeded with it because everyone got exactly what they deserved, and I was not about to wait for karma to do its job when I could do it myself.